Hi, class. How are you? Good evening. How are you, teacher? Good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. How was your day today? Um, um, go to Santa Ana. Wow. Okay. And uh, are you right now in Santana? No, in Metapan. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so how long did it take you to get there? Um, what? Excuse me? How long did it take you to get there? To Santana? Uh-huh. Um... I don't understand. Um, like, like, um, how how long was the the time? The time, yeah. Uh huh. Uh, forty five minutes. Oh, okay. It was not too bad then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. 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 And um, what about the rest of you? How was your day? It's tired. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine, Carla. I, mean, I can imagine. Yes. What about the rest of you? How was your day? Okay, thank you. Jonathan, Lennon. Uh -huh. I think it's tired too. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thank good. You. Pretty good. Not bad at all. Yeah. Good. Um, and Jonathan, how are you? Uh, I'm fine. Did you you? Not too bad. Not too bad. A little tired, too. I had a long day as well. Right. Yeah, it was a very busy day. Um, I just went by really quickly. Lots of, like... I, I didn't even have a chance to breathe. <laughs> That's how fast it went. <laughs> but it was okay. You was exhausted? Um, ex it wasn't exhausting. It was just lots of work. And um, yeah, I just, I just felt like I was running, 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 running the whole day. Um, so it just went by really quickly. It was just very, very busy. That's all. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the good thing is that I'm not exhausted. You know, I'm just it's a, it's been okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thanks for asking. Uh, okay. Becca, how are you? Are you there, Rebecca? No, maybe she's having problems with her microphone. Could be. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all right. What about Michelle? How are you, Michelle? Hello. Hi. I'm good. Good. And you? Good. And you? Good. 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 Thank you. Yeah. How was your day? Long day, short day, how was it? I think was, I don't know, normal. It was normal, okay, okay. Um, all right, so it was a regular day, let's say. It was regular. Okay, okay, good, excellent. Um, Irania, how are you? Hi, teacher, how are you today? Good, good. How, how about you? How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Good, good, excellent. I have, I have a regular day too. Okay. My heart. Okay. All right. Well, um, the, the, good thing. the same routine. <laughs> Sorry? The same routine. Oh. The same routine daily. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, well, um, 
you know, sometimes it's it's good to change, but sometimes it's nice to have a routine. You know, I, I think I, I think that it's for example, for me personally, I'll tell you something. For me, it was very hard. Um, the quarantine, the very, very first part of the quarantine, because I felt that my routine had been um, shattered and I couldn't, it, I, I didn't know what to do, right? Because my, my routine was just completely different. And I just, I was like, I felt like it was out of control. So I like it now <laughs> that I have a, a routine back again. I know that it sometimes it's like, oh yeah, the same thing over and over again. But I like it. You know, I like that there's a routine. I think it's it's healthy. It's healthy to have a routine. Yeah. Yeah. I need to go to the beach. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I I am with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I go to the beach, when I finally get to go to the beach, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for like two or three days. Just you know, be there, just you know, laying out in the sun. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna make it there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what about? Let me see who haven't said hi to you, Marcela. How are you today? Fine, Jessica. Um, let me tell you. <laughs> Right now, I am having a dinner. <laughs> I'm oh. sorry. Okay, okay, not a problem. <laughs> okay, all right. I will make you talk so much then. <laughs> Enjoy your dinner. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Um, and let's see who I haven't said hi. Ah, Delia, I haven't said hi to Delia. How are you, Delia? Hi, teacher. Hi guys, um, I'm fine. Um, and the work in the in the house, um, in the helping um, with my children in the homework for the college. Mm -hmm. Your kids are in college now, or they're in school? School. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Because college, you know what college mm -hmm. is? Uh huh. Yeah. Um, no. College is Excuse university. me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. college is In the school. So, yes. Um, yes. It's confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's what we yeah. call a false friend, right? So it's it sounds like it's um, the same in Spanish, but no, you know, it's a false friend. So mm -hmm. don't, don't get confused mm -hmm. with that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, good, good. And uh, at, at return in the class. And tomorrow for the children. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Wednesday they go back to school. You're right. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the, the the vacation yes. is over. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. Too bad, you know. You gotta go back to the routine, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And I haven't said. Did I say hi, Sonia? Did I say hi to you? Hello, teacher. Hi. How are you? I'm a little tired, but I'm good. Oh, OK. Good. Good, good, yes. good. Um, yeah, yeah, I know sometimes we're a little bit exhausted. Yeah, that happens, right? Yeah. OK, good. And Lisette, finally, I haven't said hi to Lisette. How are you, Lisette? Hi, teacher. How are you? Good. Good, good. Okay. Um, all right, guys. So, um, well, um, now that I've said hi to everybody and made sure everybody's okay, um, I wanted to quickly do a review of, the, of what we saw yesterday because I know that we went over the answers, but I could notice that in some cases, you were not really sure about why um, why we had to put it in a different place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go over the answers um, to the exercises that we did yesterday to make sure that you do understand what um, 
why those answers are correct, why you have to use those answers. Um, and that way I, I can make sure that you really do understand this topic, right? Because it can be a little bit tricky, um, especially when you don't put the relative clause at the end, but you put it instead in the middle. That's the part where I was noticing that some people were having trouble with, okay? So right now I'm going to um, show you the exercises that we did yesterday. And hopefully that will help you out a little bit to clarify any doubts that you have. Okay, so I'm, right now I'm gonna be sharing. Oh, sorry guys, that's not what I want. Ah, okay, yeah, let's just see. Can you guys see this? Tell me if you can see it. Yes, teacher, we can see. Okay, wonderful. All right, so we're gonna start with the first yes, part. Yeah, okay, wonderful. So I'm gonna start with the first part. Um, in the first part here, it, we, have the, we have the sentence, uh, we broke the computer, the computer belonged to my father. So I put the first sentence in, um, in white and the second sentence in um, in black, just to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about and that it's easier for you guys to be able to see um, what it is I'm talking about. Okay, does that make sense? Actually, um, you know what, I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. I'm actually gonna change it a little bit around just to make sure that you guys understand what I'm just give me one second here. I'm gonna try this again. Okay. Can you guys see it now? Tell me when you can see it. Yes, teacher. Yeah, teacher. Okay, good. All right, so um, so like I said, I put the first sentence in white and the second sentence in black. So the first sentence, we broke the computer, the computer belonged to my father. If you notice the second sentence, what we are concentrating on is the computer, which is right there. Because we are concentrating on the computer, then we're going to put the relative clause after the computer, which is actually right here, right? So the computer is right there. So it's the same, right? So all we have to do here is we have to, because we're not going to have the computer, the computer, right? This doesn't make sense. So instead, we're going to eliminate the second, the second part of the computer, and we're going to add Done. a, a, um, a relative pronoun, which would be either, what are the possibilities? Then, that. Which one? That. Right, okay, good. That or, what's the other Ooh. possibility? Which? Exactly, we can also use, oops. So I can, I can use whichever one of these, okay? So I can say, we broke the computer that belonged to my father or which belonged to my father. Does that make sense? Does that make yeah, sense to everybody? Yeah, yeah, teacher. Okay, good. Now, second one. Here, if you, know, if you notice the second sentence here, we are, um, the, sen the sentence is emphasizing the class, right? 
The second sentence is emphasizing the graph, the glass. So that means that we're describing the glass. Now, if you notice here, we have is right after the glass. So that means that we don't have to change the position, but we do have to eliminate this word because now we're not going to say, I dropped the glass, the glass and was new. That was, we're not going to repeat the word, the glass. So instead, we're going to eliminate that and we're going to write the relative pronoun. What's the relative pronoun? What is the relative? Sorry? Or that. That or? Or what else? Oh, no, or which. Which, exactly. That's the other possibility because which is used for an object. And a glass is an object. Okay, so that's something that we can use with that. Okay. Um, next, she loves books. The books have happy endings. Okay, if you notice in the second one, um, the the, sen the the sentence is focused on the word books. So we are obviously describing here the books, right? Does that make sense? So far, so good. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. So, sorry. Who? Cool. All right, so here we are emphasizing the books. And if you notice, uh, the, la the second sentence finishes with books. So that means that we don't have to put, change the position, but we do have to eliminate the word books. Okay, so I'm going to eliminate it here. And instead, I'm going to add the relative pronoun instead of the word books. What is the relative pronoun that I can use? That, um, that or? Yeah. Which? Or which, exactly. Because again, books is, are objects, right? Okay. In this, and over here, number four, um, in number four, you will notice that um, the second sentence is uh, emphasizing or describing the city, which is the same over here, and the city is at the end. So that means that we don't have to change the position, right? It's right after the word city. So all we have to do here is make sure we eliminate the word the city and then add the relative pronoun instead of the word city. What are the relative, what's the relative pronoun? That, um, right, that or, or which, which. or which, exactly. Right? Okay, so far so good? You follow me on this? You following me on this or not yet? Yes, teacher. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Teacher. All right, now over here, look at this one. The man in the, is in the garden, the man is wearing the blue jumper. In the second sentence, what are we emphasizing? Exactly, we're emphasizing the man, right? It's because we're, we're here, we're describing the man here. Now, in the sentence over here, the first one, notice that the man is over here, it's not at the end. That means that we have to change the position of this second sentence. We can't leave it at the end because the relative pronoun has to be directly after the thing that you are describing. And if I leave it here, that means that I'm describing the garden. Does that make sense for everybody? Yeah, because in the sentence, um, the subject is the man. I change the second uh, sentence um, for the continue the subject. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay, good. So what we're going to have to do then is eliminate, we're going to have to eliminate this part, or better said, sorry, not eliminate, we're going to have to change the position, okay, of this part. So let me eliminate this part, or better said, sorry, I'm going to 
take away this part and I'm going to move it to put it after the thing I am describing. In this case, over here. I'm going to put it after the man. Okay. And it will look like this. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So far, so good? Yeah. Okay. But again, we do not, we can't say the man, the man. So we're going to have to eliminate the word or the, the words, the man. And I'm going to replace them with a relative pronoun. Which relative who? pronoun am I going to replace it with? Who? Good. I can yeah. replace it with the word who or that. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. Why? Because we're talking about the man. The man is a person. Therefore, I can I can um, replace it with uh, the word who because who is used for a person. Does that make sense for everybody? Is that is that making sense for everybody or not really? Yeah, I understand. Right now, I need you guys to tell me if this doesn't make sense, it's okay. You just need to let me know because I won't be able to help you unless I, 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 I know that you don't understand it, okay? So notice, again, the relative clause is going to be all of this. And the relative clause in this sentence is in the middle, not at the end, because we are we have to put the relative clause after the thing you are describing. In this case, I'm describing the man. If I put it over here, then I would be describing the garden. Does that make sense for everybody? Yeah, okay. Good. Um, okay. All right. Um, Let's continue here. Now, this that's the this is the first um, parts of this exercise. Now I'm going to be going to the second exercises here. And this time, since I've already explained, you're gonna tell me where I'm gonna put it. Am I gonna put it at the begin uh, at the end, or I, do I have to put it in another position? So right here, the second sentence. Do I put it at the end, or I put it in a, in a different position? In a different position. Why? Continues the verb because I'm sorry because the verb is the subject. Um, the second sentence talk about the verb. Okay, what are we focusing on in the second sentence? What are we describing? What are we giving information about? Teacher, in that you can you you can put in the beginning. For example, the girl, the girl, the, the bank. Good. Is from, yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yes, we're going to put it after the girl, so we're going to put it over here. The relative clause would go over here. Okay. Does that make sense for everybody? Mm -hmm. You understand why I'm putting it over here? Yeah. Okay, good. Now again, the whole thing, I'm not gonna, I'm going to eliminate the repetitive word. And what I'm gonna do is change this repetitive word for a, um, a relative pronoun. What's the relative pronoun? Who? Good, that or who. Okay, so I'm gonna say the, the girl that is from India works in a bank or the girl who work, who is from India works in a bank, okay? So over here, what about oh, this one? Do I put the, the, do I leave the relative clause over here or do I change it to a different position? Change the change. position. Good, we change the position. Where do we put it? After? After my after sister. My sister. Good, after my sister. Okay, and I'm going to eliminate my sister because we don't want repetitive words. And I'm gonna replace the word my sister with 
good. Let your home. Okay. There you go. And so we end up with the sentence. My sister that lives in Australia has three children, or my sister who lives in Australia has three children. Okay? What about over here? The waiter was rude. The waiter was wearing a blue shirt. Okay. Am I going to put this, am I going to leave the sentence over here at the end, or am I going to change the position? Change the position. Good. I'm going to change the position. Where am I going to put it? after the waiter, good. And the same thing, I am I am going to have to replace the word the waiter. So I take away the, the word the waiter. And what I do is I add the relative pronoun. What am I gonna put? Good, we're gonna say that or who. And what we end up with is the sentence the waiter that was wearing a blue shirt was rude, or the waiter who was wearing a blue shirt was rude. Okay. And over here, the same thing. Tell me, am I going to leave the relative pronoun in the same position, or am I going to change it? Change the position. Change the position. Where am I going to put it? After the money. After the word money, right? because that is the thing that we are describing, okay? And if you notice, I'm, again, I'm not gonna say the money, the money, so I'm gonna eliminate this part here, and I'm going to replace it with the relative pronoun. What, which relative pronouns am I going to replace it by? Good, in this case, we're gonna use which or? That. that. Good, okay. So I end up with a, the money which belongs to John is in the kitchen or the money that belongs to John is in the kitchen. Notice that we're gonna use which and not who because the money is an object. And finally, the last one, the table was my grandmother's. Do I leave the relative clause there or do I change the position? Yeah, you can change the position. Where do I put it? After the table. Good, after the table, because that's the thing that we are describing. Okay? And again, we are going to eliminate the word table because we're not going to repeat the same word. And we're going to change it to a relative pronoun. What's the relative pronoun we're going to use? which or that because we're talking about an object so the table we would say um so the table which was my grandmother's got broken or we can say the table that was my grandmother's got broken so far so good guys Does that make sense? Please tell me if it doesn't. If it doesn't, it's okay. You can let me know. So you can see then that it's actually not too difficult if you just identify what the relative clause is describing and you put it after the thing that you're describing. You can't, it's not always going to go at the end. It's going to depend. All right. Is that pretty clear for everybody? Or do you need more explanations? Anything you want to ask before I move on to the next topic? For me, it's clear, teacher. Okay. Good. 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 And the others? Me too, teacher. It's good. It's okay. Good. Everybody's okay? Yes, it's okay. Yes, each other. Don't be afraid of asking. If, if it's not, you can tell me. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing there.
Okay, so with this topic, you should be able to finish off section four, sorry, section three without any problem at all. Um, you should be able to do the midterm. So my question before I continue, because I'm gonna be looking at section four right now, but before I continue, I wanna know, do you, um, do you guys have any questions about the midterm? Any questions at all about the midterm? No. No? Okay. And speaking about sections and midterm and everything, I actually want to do a little poll on you right now. So I'm going to ask you all to be able to um, answer one simple question and answer it as truthfully as possible, okay? So I just want to know where you're at right now, okay? So in the platform, I want you please to tell me um, in the poll, what section you are working on in this moment. Okay, so I have 10 people that should be voting. Everybody, I should have everybody voting. Like I said, please don't, um, like, don't be afraid to tell me, just, I, I'm really interested in knowing the answer, so, okay. I didn't put section five because I have a feeling that you haven't, you haven't gotten there yet. So as far as I went with section four, but if anybody is on section five, you can let me know too. Okay, I still have people that haven't voted, so. Okay. Um, good, so I still have a little, some people that haven't voted yet, if you could please answer quickly, as quickly as possible. Okay. Still have about three people who haven't answered. Okay, from the looks of it so far, I know there are still people that haven't answered yet, but from the looks of it, it looks like uh, most of you are in section three, which is good. Okay, there. Okay, excellent. There's, um, and actually most, well, half of like almost half. So most of you are in section three and a few are already in section four, which is excellent. Very good. Okay, good, good. So, um, okay, very good, excellent, excellent, everybody. You, um, I would say you are where you're supposed to be, which is um, the majority of you are where you're supposed to be and um, some of you are even further on. So that's great, that's excellent. Um, just make sure you do the midterm. Uh, like I said, you have we have already finished all this set of the information that you need to know for the midterm. So you shouldn't have any problems completing that. Okay, thank you. There was one person that didn't vote, but the majority voted. So at least I have the, the idea here. Excellent. And thank you guys for letting me know if you guys need any, if you have, if you need help with any section there, just make sure that you let me know what part you, you're asking about, okay? All right, guys, so I'm gonna stop the poll right now. Um, excellent. Um, okay. Okay, all right, so today we're gonna to start with section number four. And in section number four, we are gonna be talking a little bit about um, possibilities. So when you're talking about something, you're saying, how possible something is, um, we use different ways. We can do it with models or we can do it with adverbs, okay? So um, I'm 
going to start here with Can you guys see the whiteboard? Let me know when you can see the whiteboard. No? Can't see the whiteboard yet? I can see uh, the whiteboard. Oh, okay, good. Oh, I, was, I was starting to worry there. Okay, good. So let's talk here about possibilities. Um, okay. We call them, we can also call them speculations and deductions. Do you understand what the difference between a speculation and a deduction is? You guys know the difference between a speculation and a deduction? No? Yes? No? An idea? Um, the speculation is when you um, don't, don't know the mm -hmm. truth or think it's a lies. Okay. Okay. Any other ideas? Okay, I'll give you a basic, uh, the, uh, you, you, you have the idea there. Um, the idea here with the possibility for speculations and deductions is that speculations are used when we, um, we're making a conclusion, but just because that's what we think is the, is the conclusion. Um, and whereas deduction, we're making a conclusion, but we're basing it on evidence. Okay, and so because there's evidence, there's more of a possibility. Okay, so basically, when we're not really sure, or when you have a doubt, when you have, yeah, speculations is like, yeah, like a doubt, or uh -huh, when you're not really sure. I would say speculations are when you're like, it's a 50 50 chance let's say. And where deductions are more like a, I'm 95% to, to, to 99% sure. Okay? Okay. okay. So this is like, like I said, 50-50 speculations, like this is a possibility, maybe yes, maybe no. And deductions are more like, yeah, I'm pretty sure of it. I'm like almost 100% sure. I'm like 95 to 99% sure. Okay, um, so let's talk about speculations. Um, let me change. All right, so speculations, like I said, it's you're probably about 50% um, sure. You're not really, really sure. So what we can do when we're talking about this, we can use, um, we can use models or we can use adverbs, okay? Um, some models that we can use. Let me change the thing. Must. 
Um, must is not for speculation, uh, but there is another model that we can use. Should, should or good? Should could, or good? Yes. Could is one. Okay. So could, what else? Should. Mm -hmm. no, Mate. Might. Good, good. May. Or might. might. Okay. So these are models that we can use for speculation. We're not really sure about something or fifty percent sure. And adverbs that we can use are like, for example, maybe. Or perhaps. You guys understand what perhaps are? Mm. Perhaps it means the same thing as maybe. It's just perhaps it's a, a tiny bit more formal, I would say, but not very much, okay? Um, or we can also say possibly. Possibly. Okay, so those are the words that we can use. Like I said, these are models. All of these are models, and all of these are um, adverbs. Okay. And in the case of um, of deductions, let me put over here. Change the color. Let me just change the color back again. All right, now we're here. So we have deductions. And like I said, this is like you're pretty sure. So I would say you're like 95 to 99% sure. I wouldn't say like 100 because it's very impossible to be 100% sure. Like even when you do tests, in tests they say, oh, it's, you know, 99.9% .9 sure because there's always that small little chance that you could be wrong, right? So, um, so I would say, um, yeah, it's 95 to 99% sure. And the models that we can use there, what models do you think we could use? Any ideas? No. Sorry? Show? No. no. Actually, somebody already, I think, I don't, I don't know who, I think it was Marcella, I'm not sure, that's mentioned the model, one of the models here. Any ideas? I'll give you a clue. It starts with an M. Oops, I give you too much. <laughs> Must. Yay, there you go. <laughs> Good, all right. Excellent, Marcella. Okay, must. Must we use for deductions, okay? Must is when you are pretty but sure about something it that it's true. It's not for an obligation. Oh, okay. See, that's why, that's something important. That's a very good question. And something very important for you to understand about models. Models are used for different things. So yes, we can use must for an obligation, but must can also be used for other things. Just like um, like could, could can is it can be used for a speculation, 
um, it can use it can be used for advice. For example, you can say, "What should I do about um, what should I do about um, I don't know losing weight?" Well, you could go to the gym and start exercising more. Right, so that is an advice. So we can use could for advice, speculations, and whew, well, a whole bunch of things. So the same, the same thing with must. We can use must for, um, for obligations, but in this case, we're going to use it in for things. Okay? Okay. And must is used for things that we're pretty sure that it happens, okay? And the one, the opposite of must would be? What do you think is the opposite of must? No ideas? Okay, it's another model. And this one starts with a C. Any idea? Teacher, I search in, in internet and um, it says a uh, model for deduction it says mine, main, and cool, mm -hmm. and can't. Good. There you go. That's the other one. Excellent. There you go. And can't is used when you're pretty sure that the answer is negative, okay? All right, so you're saying, no, that's not possible, okay? And speaking about um, saying that's possible, we also can use uh, a, an adverb. And the adverb that we use for deductions, that when we are pretty sure about something, we say definitely. Okay, so that's the adverb that we use. So, but, but, so models that we use for deductions must and can't. Uh, models that we use for different uh, for sorry adverbs that we use for deduction definitely. Sounds good. Is this clear for everybody or not so clear? Yeah. In my case, that topic is new. Oh, okay. Uh, the the model for uh, see the, the the model in this way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but maybe I need to see some examples. examples. Yes, and that's what yeah. I'm going to be doing right now. I'm getting okay. examples. Okay. So I just wanted to show you what what words we have to use, and now we're going to look at we're going to see the the actual how to put it into practice. Okay. So I'm going to put it over here. Come on, cooperate with me. Okay, there we go. Okay, example. Um, I can say, oh, let me take away the bold part. So at least where I am, uh, where I, like in my home, it's not raining in this moment. Um, maybe it's raining where you are, but at least where I am, it's not raining. But I can make a speculation. 
based on the fact that we know well it's um we are we are in the winter time in winter time it rains in El Salvador it's been raining the past days so maybe I just said yeah there's a possibility of rain so I could say it might rain tonight or it may rain tonight or it could rain tonight does that make sense yes any questions, guys? Uh, you can use uh, three different word, words. Sorry, what was that question? Uh, you can use uh, three different words. Yeah, exactly. I, I may rain tonight and it's cold rain tonight. Exactly, yes, yes, okay. that's right. Uh, any one of these model verbs will be okay, okay? So I could say it might rain tonight, it could rain tonight, sorry, it might rain tonight, it may rain, mm -hmm. may rain tonight, or it could rain tonight. So both, so any one of those is okay. Okay? Okay. Sounds good? Yes. Okay. Um, so um, what, what is important though, what I do want you to notice is that rain, which is the verb, is gonna be in the base form. After model verbs, we always 100% of the time put the verbs in the base form, in the original form. So we can say, we'd say it might rain tonight, it may rain tonight, it could rain tonight but it's always gonna be rain. We're not, notice that it is the third person singular, but not because it, you're gonna put the word rains. You're not gonna say it might rains tonight. You're gonna say it might rain tonight. So we're always gonna be using the infinitive or the base form of the verb. Does that make sense? Uh, don't change the the verb in this case is third person mm -mm. no never so after all models and the models are like could may might must can and then there are others right like should will not in this topic but in general models in general this is like this is a rule this is a something that will never change after all models the verb that comes after the models is always going to be an infinitive. Sound good? Is that okay? Does that make sense for, for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's why rain here is going to be in the base form. Okay, no change at all. Okay. All right, I'm going to give you another example. That is with the, that is with the models. Now I'm going to give you an example with the, um, the adverbs. And with the adverbs, if you notice these adverbs, maybe, and perhaps I've put it in capital letters. If you notice, I put it in capital letters and I did that on purpose. I did it because you can either start with the word maybe, or we can have the word perhaps, okay? but. Well, you can use any one of these words, but we're always going to start with them. Okay. For example, perhaps it is, sorry, maybe you can say, maybe it means that, or maybe it means. Maybe it means that, and then here we have the clause. Um, maybe it means that it means, it means that 
uh, we will um, have a very wet here. No, or no, we're going to make it shorter. It, it, perhaps, maybe, perhaps it means that we will. Um, need to, um, we will need to um, pay more, let's say, pay more. Okay, this is just an example. So over here, I'm actually going to make, I'm going to change, okay, so I'm going to move this a little bit over here so that I have some space, I have more space over here. Okay, there you go. So uh, maybe it means that we will need to pay more. Okay, so that's a possibility. That means that this is a possibility. Or we could also say, uh, maybe it means we will need to pay more. So, but the important thing that we have here is that the uh, adverb of um, the adverb here, maybe perhaps, is always going to be at the beginning. Okay? Sounds good? Yeah. Okay. And then I have, I'm going to show you when it's possible. Oh, you can say um, it. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention possibly or probably. Let me change that. There's also the word probably. Okay, so those that's probably is another adverb that we can use here. So I can say here, it um, possibly, possibly or probably means teacher. Yeah, the American which one of model use they used to use more it, it's not really much about if it's american or british it's it's both both of them are used yeah so you can use both of them it's okay mm -hmm. okay so we have a it possibly or probably means I'm going to change here means make sure in this case that we have the um, we have the verb in the in the third person singular. Oh, no, I'm just going to yeah, I'm just going to continue here. Probably means. That it will uh, take longer, let's say. There's an idea here. It probably means that it will take longer. Okay, so here, um, here the, the possibility or probability 
is going to be used uh, before the verb, okay? If you notice here, the verb means is, um, the, it's right over here, but, and here's the but, this is where it all changes. Um, it's a possibility that if we are talking about something negative, it will be the opposite. I'll give you an example here. So um, for example, we can say it, it, um, sorry, no, sorry, 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 my mistake. No, just let's, let's say it like that. Forget it, just, okay, let's just leave it like that. Okay, so we have, it possibly means that it will take longer or it probably means that it will take longer. Okay, so far so good. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that is with uh, possibilities. We can see how it's done. So in this one, remember that in, in this one, in in this one, one remember that rain is going to be in the base form. And in the other ones, the verb is going to be just regular, right? So for example, here it, we put means because we're using it. And also here we use um, means because we have it. Okay. And then let me show you quickly there how to make the deductions. In this case, like I said, we can either use must when you're, you're sure like that something's true. For example, we can say, um, it must you change the color here it must be it must be um cold must be cold. Cold outside because everyone is wearing a coat. Okay. Does that make sense? So far so good? Yeah, teacher. Yes, teacher. And like I said, be, like I said before, uh, with the verb, the, with the verb after models, we are always, always, always going to be using it in the base form. That's why it, after must we use be, and we don't say it must is, we say it must be, okay? So far so good? Yes. Okay. Oh, I don't know why it doesn't go on here. It must be closed inside because of one. Let's do put most of the yes. Oh, it still doesn't. Trying to fit the word coat in there. There we go. Everyone's wearing a coat. Yeah. Anyways, well, the idea, you guys have the idea here. Anyways, uh, the next one. Um, for example, we can say, now this one is a negative. For example, um, she can't and then we have the verb in the the verb in the infinitive form. We can say for example, she can't um, play football because 
because she broke her leg? Yeah. Uh, but remember, here we're making a deduction, right? Um, she can't. Uh, so let's make it that she can't. Um, she can't. Uh, let's say. She can fix her. Okay. She can't be let's say she can't be she can um, be a teacher because you don't have any patients. Uh okay. Okay, she can't Maybe. be um a teacher because because why is it because she uh, because don't have any pitch patients okay because she doesn't have any patients okay let me patient no patients Patience. Okay, there you go. She can't be a teacher because she doesn't have any patience. Okay. Now this is uh, basically you're 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 making a deduction. It's impossible. You're saying it's impossible she that she is a teacher because she doesn't have any patience. So far, so good. Does that make sense for everybody? Yeah. Any questions you want to ask so far? No, teacher. So this is clear for everybody. Notice again, when, when we're going to be using the base form of the verb and we're not gonna be using, um, so for example, in the case of, um, of um, it, right? so we have here in, in the case of it, we're going to be um, using be and not is, okay? The same thing here with the word she, you notice the word she is, um, is a third person singular, but even then we're not going to say she can't is, we're going to say she can't be. So we're always going to be using the, the base form of the verb. Okay. And I'm going to give you one more. I'm just going to erase the word any so I can. Okay, there you go. All right, so she can't be a teacher because she doesn't have patience. All right, and then I'm gonna do one more for def the def um, definitely. Oh, so let me just um, draw underline here. So here we have the spec, the, the model is must, and here the model is can't. And one more sentence to give you the example with definitely, we can say it definitely means that um, it definitely means that I won't be going with you on the trip. And I won't be going with you. Let me just make it shorter. I'm not going to be going with you. So, or let's say he, let me change the I to he. So you're pretty sure that he won't be going with you because um, you know he has to um, he has to you know he has to work he has to work all weekend so he can't go with you to um, you know to Guatemala on the weekend right it's impossible right so you're pretty sure about it that's why we're going to be using the word definitely. And if you notice, definitely is used uh, 
after it's used with the um, with um, the verb in the base in the simple present. Oh, sorry. Okay, that's why we're using means. So far, so good, guys. Any questions that you guys have? No, teacher. Okay. All right. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to be working on this. We're going to be um, doing some exercises there. We're better said, we're going to be um, learning to use speculations and deductions, and we're going to be doing it in groups, okay? All right, guys, so um, that's going to be all for today, okay? And I will see you guys tomorrow. Any questions? Anything before, before we leave? No. No, teacher. No, teacher. Okay. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure seeing you guys again, and I hope everything is okay. Um, by your house and everything, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, good night. Okay. All right, good night, guys. Take good care. Night. Good night, everybody. Good night, Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.